But I just want to let you know after the show, I'm going to be out front selling t-shirts. I'm starting to relax now. I've just been like buzzed for a month and a half, and I'm finally starting to just like let go a little bit, you know? Like fucking breathe. How about a warm welcome for Andy Farnsworth, folks? Give it up for Andy Farnsworth. blush welcome to my one-man show about living alone in a basement apartment in Denver for a year and a half I didn't put that on the bill I didn't think you'd come thank you for being here thank you Let's try, let's do it. Let's do one man, one man show here a little bit. <laughs> August seventeenth, twenty twenty. They said this was a garden level apartment, but it's like potato level. <laughs> There's a little bit of light that comes in, but. You know, most of that is just blocked by a dog shitting through the prison bars. <laughs> it's like a fish prison. I live in a fish prison. <laughs> it's hard to come up with material, you know? There's no audiences. People are weird right now. I had a bit about Sour Patch Kids. What's the deal with Sour Patch Kids? <laughs> it's weird if you think of them as Sour Patch Children. <laughs> you haven't lived until you've had a Sour Patch Man. <laughs> Sour Patch Teens. That's weird. I don't know, I had a bit about a space heater. I guess I could do that. I don't know if it'd work. Space heater? What's the deal with space heaters? Why they call it that? What else would it heat? Time. That's the other option, time. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. I got a cat, I got a cat. His name is Sardine. It's a good cat. I, uh, I cut his balls off the first week I got him, which that's a bit of a power move when you get a new roommate. <laughs> Just trying to flex a little bit on him. Show him who's boss. Gained some weight. Anybody gain weight during the pandemic? You ever wonder if when you die, it's gonna be the fat you or the thin you? <laughs> but I don't know, like, most of the last, you know, year and a half, I mean, I always did this, but I like to wander around in stores, just kinda take it in, just be around people, but, you know, be alone. <laughs> Bed Bath & Beyond. It sounds like the journey out of depression. <laughs> You're in bed. Take a bath. I don't... What's next? I don't know. I don't want to think about it. What's next is Target. That's what's next. I like Target. I... I would go to Target often just to see one, one beautiful person. You just want to see beauty, you know? I know it's not maybe the right place to go, but... Like, you don't want to be with them. It just, you just want to be inspired. You want to know 
that there's a there, it's sort of an endorsement. If you see a beautiful person at a target, you're like, okay, this is a happening target. I'm right. This is good. I found a good target. <laughs> I don't want to talk to the people. I just want to know they're there, and I can go back home to my cat. Crate and barrel. <laughs> Crate or barrel. That'd be a different store. <laughs> hey, what do you want, buddy? Crate or barrel? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know. I put off some weird energy sometimes, so I appreciate it. Uh, the, the support. Uh, Women, if I could just put in a quick word for creepy men, just a PSA <laughs> while I have you here. Um, you should feel safe. Like, that's not what I'm getting at. People should feel safe. I don't, and I'm not trying to, you know, shun that or anything. But, like, there's this other kind of creepy. There's this, right? I can't shut it off. I try. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm safe. I'm a safe person. But, like, it's just... Really shy and horny <laughs> at the same time, and it comes out. I don't know how people, uh... It's hard to smile when you have a boner. <laughs> I, don't know how people... I don't have... Uh, uh, just... I don't know, I also have, like, people, when I start talking, they're like, oh, his voice sounds different than what he looks like. Like, my voice, it sounds like I relapsed on helium and then I got hit in the head. <laughs> it's fine, it's good for this, but, like, for defending a woman's honor in a Home Depot parking lot, it's... <laughs> hey! Cut it out. <laughs> I just came through a time machine. I've been selling Ovaltine in the 50s. <laughs> Get your hands off <laughs> I don't know, I come from worried people, you know? I mean, I was raised by a civil engineer and my mom, who's sort of a professional worrier, stay-at-home worrier. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, my dad's retired. My mom's not. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you don't want a laid-back engineer. It's good for his professional life, you know? You want somebody who's worried about the bridge they're working on. You know? You don't want somebody who's like, ah, fuck it, I'm sure these numbers will add up. I'm going to lunch. It'll be fine. You don't want that. But it, it, it translates. I mean, I also have farmers, too, in my background. And farmers are even more nuts. I mean, it goes way back. People used to kill virgins so they'd get more crops. Can you imagine being in that headspace? Let's kill a virgin so we get more corn. Anyway, I'm just... I've got my own superstitions. It, it makes you a little nuts. You know, I, 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 I grew up religious, farmers, engineers. Like, I don't... I try not to jerk off on days that I have shows. I'm worried that God will punish me by making me bomb. And... Uh, I'll let you decide how long it's been. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, there was a meme that used to go around on the internet that was, uh, every time you masturbate, a kitten dies. Do you remember that? It was like one of the early memes. <laughs> but, uh, I don't believe that. I believe that every time I jerk off, a nice young couple from Indiana gets turned down for a mortgage. <laughs> I had it coming. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Do you guys feel... I mean, the world, it's different, right? I don't know. You don't want to go into it, like what happened for the last two years, but it, it's weird right now, right? Is this the first time you guys are together as a group? Like, is it anybody? Yeah. yeah. Like, how much eye contact to make, stuff like that? I don't know. For me, it's an issue. I never know. You know, 
I feel like in health class they should have taught us that, how much eye contact to make. <laughs> it's just one banana, two banana, look away. It's very simple. I've been sweating about it my whole life. It could have been one quick lesson. Wash your hands before you finger somebody. One banana, two banana, look away. That's all we needed in health class. Yeah. Dry humping, remember dry humping? I don't have a bit about it, I just, I just am reminiscing about it. God, it's so, you just had on your soccer shorts, the nylon, and just the, you could start a fire. It's so nice. It's just so simple. But I, uh, I don't know, I tried to date, I don't know if this is a dating, but it's just trying to connect with somebody, you know. I don't do the apps, I don't like the apps, I have issues, I'm a little, you know, sensitive. My first message to anybody should be, I feel like we've grown apart. <laughs> That's what I'm coming out of the gate with. <laughs> and people will ghost you? That's the term? Some of you are ghosting somebody right now. You don't care, do you? Just black heart inside. This, it hurts people like me. I don't feel like it's the right term, like, because a ghost will come back from the afterlife and bother you. That's love. Boo. Boo. I'm dead. I came back to tell you some shit. Well, that's the first shit I use. I haven't cussed that much. I don't know if this was clean so far. I, I thought this was going to be clean, but I guess it's not. <laughs> I'm trying to be clean, but then it just gets creepier. <laughs> but I was seeing somebody uh, for a minute, and uh, she canceled on me to watch a show called The Bachelor, <laughs> which is kind of funny. It mostly hurts. That's a nice way of saying I'm not interested. I've found a other pool of eligible men and I'm going to be watching them tonight. But it's like, I'm a bachelor. Come over to my house. Watch me rearrange everything at 90 degree angles on my desk. I'll buy you flowers, cook you dinner, one plate at a time, because I only have one plate. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, I wouldn't cancel on somebody, I mean, if I were gonna cancel on somebody, it would be for the show Disasters at Sea. <laughs> you know that show? It's good. It's a good show. I like it. It starts with a shipwreck. It's nice. You know, I know what's gonna happen. And then, you know, it's just an icy North Atlantic sea and ship goes down. That's the beginning, right? It's comforting. <laughs> but, uh, and then there's an investigation Usually, you know, there's one guy who made it, and he's like, well, we all thought it'd be a bad idea for Bob to weld his own boat, <laughs> but nobody said anything. <laughs> then they show, you know, the wife or whatever, and she's like, you know, I, I do miss him, but I have these beautiful children, you know. I feel like a widow, like, that's a show I'd watch, The Widow. That'd be a good show. That'd be a great show. I'm serious. Like, you're, you're second place. I'm fine with that, right? The person they're cheating on you with is dead. You guys, I don't know. I just, I, I'm serious. I think it'd be fine. I you can think about him while we're having sex. I'll wear a life jacket. <laughs> I really wouldn't mind. I, I just, it takes some of the pressure off. But, Something, we lost a little energy just now, I don't know. <laughs> I like to be a guy who runs around on stage and, you know, humps the stool and stuff, but I, don't, I just don't have it in me. You wouldn't believe it if I humped. If I humped the stool, like, I'd have to apologize to it first. <laughs> yeah, so, you're safe, buddy. Yeah, but I don't know, man, I mean... 
You can't take it personally. People say that. No, don't take it personally, dude. Don't take it personally. Which, it's never about anything good. It's never like, happy birthday. Don't take it personally. <laughs> I don't know. I've never, I mean, that's going to be a lifetime challenge. I don't think I'll ever get that one figured out. I mean, I get the spirit of it, but like on my tombstone, I think I would, well, if I had the money for all the letters, I would, I would say, if you're visiting my tombstone, you probably hurt my feelings. Sorry, I killed myself just to make you feel bad. <laughs> don't take it personally. Don't. You can hike, that's the thing. People hike to meet people, right? That's a, you can be in a hiking club, I guess. It's just a single file line of people wondering if they're gonna have sex with each other. <laughs> I, went on a, I went on a date with somebody who, um, well, she just started returning clothes. Like, we went back to her car and she's like, hold on, I gotta get some stuff. And, she just went and started returning clothes at Nordstrom. That was it. Like, I, it's just a sad thing that I'm saying. This is just a monologue right now, but I mean... I don't know. It's weird when a date just turns into her running errands, you know? You're just alone in the bra section at Macy's or whatever. Oh, man. I don't know. I'm okay. Everything's gonna be fine. Just don't... Don't collapse any. The pauses are long, dude. You can edit the pauses out. <laughs> There's plenty of fish in the sea. That's what that's the thing people say. But it's also mostly ocean. <laughs> Probably 99% ocean. I'm not a scientist. But there's some halibut out there who has been swimming for however long halibut swim, but hasn't seen anybody. It's not saying there's plenty of fish in the sea, that halibut. <laughs> Andy, write punchlines for the jokes. Don't just, <laughs> just write premises. You've been doing comedy long enough to know that you have to have a little thing at the end where they laugh. <sighs> okay. Long distance, you can do long, long distance dating, uh, I guess. That's the thing. Uh, I don't know. Have you ever thought about the carbon footprint? of people traveling for sex, it's huge. It's most travel. For most of history, people had sex with other people within walking distance. That's most of history. Just saying, if you care about the environment, fuck locally. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not a walk of shame if you jog a little bit. This is a poem that I wrote called Me and the TSA Lady Share a Moment of Quiet Contemplation While We Stare at the Pocket Pussy She Found in My Running Shoe. <laughs> I'm a bit of a codependent person. This is not a funny concept for comedy. Codependent's not a funny word. It has too many syllables. Codependent. But uh, if you don't know what that is, it's just sort of, um, how, do, how do you describe codependence? It's like I'm, I'm a lifeguard, and I see somebody drowning, and then I go out to save them, and then we have sex with each other. <laughs> And then we both think that we're saving the other person. That's pretty much it. I know that I'm part of the problem. I know it, everybody, like each of you thinks you're helping the other one. Like you're like, hey, she needs me. I, I need to be around. I'm winning at this relationship. Everybody thinks that. 
you know? But, I mean, I kind of realized, like, I'm the problem driving. Like, that's when I really realized, okay, I have some culpability here. You know, it's not everybody else's fault. I'm part of the problem, you know? Like, I had a moment where I was driving, and, uh, like, I cut somebody off, and my first thought was, I keep it under 80 while I'm urinating into a Gatorade bottle. (laughs) Don't judge me. You ever see those, uh, the nut, the truck nuts? <laughs> what? Are you, like, what are you doing? You know? What the, really? I always think it'd be fun if they put on the organ donor registry, you could donate your truck nuts. <laughs> Somebody needed them. And then, like, the paperwork got screwed up, and then, like, some old lady in a Volvo was driving around with some blue <laughs> testicles. I think that'd be fun. So talking about relationships, though, yeah, culpability. Uh, but I, I, I don't know, man. I mean, like, I think that a lot of the stuff that I struggle with, it, it came from uh, the children's books we read as kids. Remember The Giving Tree? It's a sweet book, supposedly. But if you remember that book at all, okay, it's just a lone tree. A weird tree. There's no other trees around. And then, like, a little boy comes up, and the tree's like, hey, you want all my fruit? (laughs) Take it. Take all my fruit. Love me. And then he gives him his branches. Kid comes along and carves his initials in the side of the tree. His girlfriend is seeing somebody else, and the tree's like, here, take all my, my trunk and everything. Basically, the end of the book... This is a weird thing to be angry about, I get it. It's it's a sweet book, but just hang with me. Like, an old man comes and sits on the tree, and the tree's like, I'm a stump. You can sit on me, too. Like, it's just, that's not the message, I think. You can stay a tree, and people will still love you as a tree. You don't have to give away your whole self. A book should start off as the stump, and he gets, hey, give me back my branches. (laughs) You know? It's, I don't know, it's just not the lesson that you want to teach kids, I think. I don't know. (laughs) Children's books, man, I I was a sad kid, and, like, they were all sad. I didn't need any more sadness, you know? And, I mean, I remember, there's always dogs dying. There's a lot of dead dogs growing up. How to go to the bathroom and not be ashamed of it. It's like, I got it. I don't need a book. I got it. I'm good. Something about the moon. Like, moms gets cancer. Something like that. And then, like, the younger brother does the dishes one night. And then everybody turns into a lollipop. I think that's a book. I might be be making that one. There might be a bunch of different books mixed together. Do you remember... Bedtime for Francis? Yeah, that was a great... It's just a Wolverine who has a chocolate bar. Like, that's all I remember. That's good writing. (laughs) I don't remember much about the plot. It's just, like, furry animal that probably could kill you and eat you and would probably die. I would probably have allergies to the chocolate bar. But anyway, as a kid, you know, you're like, I get this. It's just a bear thing and likes chocolate. Okay. (laughs) I'm ready to go to bed. That's comforting. (laughs) Man, I'm just burning through this material. It's, it's going fast. <laughs> I've been in front of you know, people as much this year. It's been weird. You know, the audiences have been weird. People in, in, in Denver, like a lot of audiences are stoned. You guys, I don't know if you are, but it's weird. Like they're laughing at stuff from like 10 minutes ago. Right now. <laughs> which, which one was it that you're laughing at? I don't know. I'm getting older. I hate to be, I never thought I'd be the guy who says that. I'm getting old, man. I'm getting older. But like, I remember, like, it's been like that since early on, you know? Like, there was a kid in fourth grade, I remember, who'd be like, hey, God, do you remember second grade? <laughs> writing in cursive, watching Mr. Tamburini play Oregon Trail. Remember that? That's what we had to, we had to watch one of our teachers play Oregon Trail. 
we all huddled around the Apple IIe computer and he like, we'd tell him the commands. And he'd be like, hey, we all died of dysentery. I don't know. Like right now, in some nursing home, there's a 90-year-old guy showing around the new guy. He's like, okay, that's where we keep the alarm clocks with the giant numbers, and that's the cafeteria. How old are you? The guy's like 88, and he's like, ah, that was a fun age. I remember 88. <laughs> and people try to rope you into the conspiracy of getting old. That's what bothers me. Like I have a friend, and I'll take a minute to get back to him. Like, hey man, sorry I took so long to get back to you. And he's like, yeah, we're getting old, dude. We're getting older. It's just what happens. Like, no, this, uh, yes, but no, not about this. It just took me a second. I'm, uh, I'm losing my hair, which is, yeah, thank you. I heard a little sympathy there. It hurts, it sucks, man. Like women, I know you guys have stuff, like your uterus falls out or whatever, but. <laughs> I'm losing my hair. <laughs> and like I, the uterus thing, I get like that, that makes sense, kinda. <laughs> like from an evolutionary perspective though, this doesn't add up. I'm not using this for like anything. Like there's no evolutionary reason that I should lose this. The only thing I can think of is it's God's way of saying to younger women, don't, don't fuck this one, man. Move along. The top of his head's worn out. He's, he's not virile. He's lying about his age. I mean, you can get hair transplants, but like as soon as you Say that first dad joke, like they can see the bald spot in your heart. <laughs> now, as a grown man, I mean, it's hard to make friends with other grown men, especially in the sauna or the steam room. That's, that's where I go a lot. Women, if you don't know who's in like our steam room, if you're interested, I'll tell you who's in the steam room. It's like a pretty consistent cast of characters. There's always an old Russian guy crouching and shaving, <laughs> trying to get you to go to a strip club. And then there's like always a quiet Japanese man with a plastic sack of some sort, and he's tied it in some elaborate way. That's pretty, I'm, in, I'm confident in making that stereotype. I've seen those people in every steam room I've ever been in. And, and it's weird, like you'll hear, like men open up with weird, like it's not pickups lines, they're friendship lines, you know, and they're weird sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I get it, it's hot in there, but I had this one guy, I, 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 got, I got in the steam room and it's all, you know, clouded up and everything and then I just heard through the fog, I can't come after a big meal. I mean, I was like, well, what? What'd you eat, dude? I don't know. Where'd you eat? It's like the Olive Garden. I'm like, okay. I think that's the end of this conversation. Okay. August 17th, 2020. Or like, if you saw like a cop, like it's weird that you sit up straighter, you know, <laughs> at the intersection. Like what's that about? Like the cop's gonna be like, oh, I'm not pulling this guy over, he's got good posture. <laughs> I'm sure he's fine. I think like it's weird that when people have Vanity plates, they just put the name of the car on their vanity plate. Like if it's a red Grand Am, they'll just put RD Grand M. <laughs> like that's your spot to shine, man, and you just put the name of the car. Like it's already there. You didn't need to spend 50 bucks or whatever just to say the name of the car. Do something creative. Like I feel like 
there's got to be some dyslexic cops out there, you know, and like, maybe if you just put like, I, E, E, I, I, E, I, they'd never be able to call you in. They'd... They'd be like, uh, we got a indigo, e- echo, indigo, let me hold on, start over. <laughs> echo, indigo, <sighs> fuck it, it's a red Grand Am, it's a red Grand Am. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, now is the part of the show uh, where I'm going to tell you a story that didn't make it onto the moth. <laughs> Do you guys know what the moth is? This is a storytelling podcast. Okay, it starts like this. I have been depressed ever since the circumcision. <laughs> it has been a rough couple weeks. Uh, so, uh, this is true, though. I, I actually was circumcised at the age of 18. No, I was 17. It was late. This is true. And I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I've been trying to tell audiences about this for a little while now. And I just want to be heard. Because it's fine. Like, everything's fine. But, like, you know, I was just... I wore a Smashing pumpkin shirt every day. It was the same one. It said, just say maybe on the back. That was my favorite shirt. I had it at, like, prom pictures. They were, it just said, just say maybe. That was my, my shirt. Um, and my dick was screwed up. Like, I was half Jew, half Gentile for a good portion of my life, if that makes sense. Do you know, anyway, I don't know if you get that. It was half, like, right. Anyway, so I'm, like, 17, and uh, I said to my mom, like, I, I, need to, I need to get my dick fixed. She's like, it's penis. Like, oh. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, it, I need to get it, like, fixed. I'm, like, not having sex, but it's going to happen hopefully here soon, and I'd like to have it be presentable. She's like, well, let me see it. Because she, I love my mom, like, I really do, like, but that's, you know, she wanted to make sure it was, like, I needed it, you know, I needed to have it done. I didn't show her my, my dick. Um, but I'm 17, so we go to the urologist, and she had to come with me, and uh, I get in to the urologist, and he, you know, he looks under the hood or whatever, or half the hood, however you <laughs> I don't want to do it. But he, he, he goes and gets my mom because she's got to be in there. And my mom sits down underneath this giant, like a giant cock. Like it's a cutaway. And I'm, you know, I'm pretty broken at this point. Like this is, this is hard, what I've just been through. Everything sounds like double entendre in this story. But, but he looked at me and he said, Andy... I'm a penis doctor, and I want you to have a perfect penis. <laughs> and, and my mom, who doesn't laugh at a lot like, of stuff like that, but she was laughing with the, just a giant cock pointing at her head. <laughs> Thank you, that was my moth story. All right. I don't tell stories, like I try to tell stories, but like I come from a long line of digressors. Like if my mom tries to tell a story like about a car accident, she'll spend 15 minutes on what was or was not in the glove compartment. (laughs) That's kind of what I come from. So that was a big success for me, thank you. (laughs) uh, I'm getting some therapy, Uh, I do that, that's pretty important. But um, you know, he's teaching me to be happy, like, I, mean, I have to go to therapy to be, like, I think I am happy, there's just a lot in the way, but, like, we jumped up and down the other day at the beginning of therapy, like, I have a 28-year-old Mormon therapist who hypnotizes me, and we, <laughs> we jumped up and down together, and it was, you know, it was nice, it was, feels weird, but I feel safe with him, uh, what else did I do to try to mix it up, I, uh, I went through the other door. I left outside the other. I usually go out the front door of his office, but I went out the side door. I was like, man, I'm making some changes. I went out the side door. And then this other part of me is like, you're a liar. You're a front door guy, dude. This is a scam. <laughs> I, uh, I always thought it'd be fun to send a therapist 
a happy Father's Day card. Just to fuck with them. Like when you're a new patient. I've had some good ones. I, I have had some bad ones, too. But, like, I had one... Okay, hold on. He had a... This is probably a boundary problem that I'm telling you this, but, like, he had, a, like, a prostate issue, so he'd have to get up every, like, I don't know, five or ten minutes to go to the bathroom. When If you're a person who's talking about your abandonment issues and the guy just keeps getting up... <laughs> that was uncomfortable. He's a good therapist, though. If you're here... Uh, I'm not gonna name any names. You're a good therapist, but I'm sorry about your prostate. It just fucked me up. <laughs> there's therapy. There's spirituality. You gotta have something, you know, something to hold on to, some kind of moral framework, I guess. I don't know how anarchists do it. It seems exhausting to not believe anything. I don't have enough like willpower to not believe in God, really. I just can't stick to the story. Uh, I just like to say help a lot. Help, and it needs to go somewhere. So that's that's the beginning of my spirituality. Help, <laughs> and uh, something's something's here in it. I don't know. I feel like I I'm a I'm a pretty pluralistic person. I mean, Jesus, Buddha, Gandhi, Tony Robbins, whatever. I I like them all. I'm a big fan. Oprah. Uh, but like, the, here's this is my issue really around like spiritual leaders. I can't think of a major spiritual figure that would be a good roommate. <laughs> think about it. Like Jesus would be like like not talking to you for forty days, right? <laughs> Doing push-ups all the time. <laughs> Tony Robbins would be yelling at him to do more push-ups. <laughs> Gandhi would just make you feel bad about eating. It smells like soup all the time. <laughs> Buddha would be the worst roommate, though. Because people would come over to your apartment, and they'd be like, what's up with the fat guy in the corner? And you're like, he just sits there. That's all he does. <laughs> God, that, that's a good bit, and I don't... It's never worked. <laughs> it's, it's never, ever worked. It's so profound. So my mom and dad, they both got the thing, the bug, the COVID thing, right? Just recently, actually. And uh, my mom was telling me over the phone, I was at the dog park visiting my cousin in Denver, and she's a veterinarian. And so like when you're at the dog park with a veterinarian, you're sort of watching with different eyes. You're studying the dogs. You just kind of can feel it. But I'm just listening to this. I'm like, man, that sucks. And and I, and as I'm listening, like I'm watching this dog, and it's a black lab, and it has a like a Hawaiian lei collar on, and it's humping like a lion dog, right? <laughs> so she's telling me this really sad thing, and I'm watching a black lab hump this other dog, right? And I want to tell her about it. I'm like, Mom, I know this is serious, but there's a dog that's really on vacation right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to share it with her, you know? I mean, there's a, there was a funniest guy on D-Day, probably. Right? <laughs> there's time for humor all the time. It's part of the human spirit, you know? Like, there's probably some, like, private, you know, they're, they're on a troop transport, storming the beaches at Normandy, you know? And then he's just scared, this private, and his friend's just like, hey, look at my dick. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, gets his head blown off or whatever. <laughs> you gotta have joy. I'm, I'm trying to be happy. I'm trying to find joy. I think it's there. I think I'm pretty happy. I, I do. Uh, I like to watch that show, uh, the, the Maria, Marie Kondo show. Do you know that one? Where, I don't know what it's called. But it's a small Japanese lady and she comes to your apartment and she throws everything out. You don't need it. That's the premise of the show, okay? I like this show. It's sort of a metaphor for life. But she has you ask this question when you look at any sort of object in your house. And she says, does this spark joy to you? You're supposed to ask yourself that. Does this spark joy? And it's like, well, you got to have like cleaning products, right? You got you you to have it. You know, it doesn't make me happy. Like Windex. No, 
<laughs> it's not fun. Like, if I followed that logic just to its core, man, does it spark joy? I would just be naked in my apartment with a fleshlight. That'd be it. That's it. That's all I got. It's a good... I don't know. I, like, I do like the show. I like to want, like, think about, does this spark joy, you know, things in my life or whatever. I also like to picture her going to Yoda's root hut, you know, like in Star Wars. She's like, you got too much stuff, buddy. I was like, mm, spark joy, it does not. <laughs> All right, that's a good bit. I like that one. That's for me. I, I, I have hope, though. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on out there. Uh, war, there's war happening, and, uh, you know, inflation, and uh, people not knowing how much eye contact to make. We're all crazy. But I saw, the other day, I saw a UPS guy open the door for a FedEx guy. So I feel like we're going to be okay. Yeah. Things are going to be fine. Oh, man. Well, you guys are, you guys are fun. I hope that, I hope that you're uh, safe and sane and, and kind of happy and, you know, and you're having a having a good time tonight. I think we covered that. <laughs> August 17th, 2020. <sighs> Fuck, I already did that bit. <laughs> Struggling, man. They can tell. They can tell. You're just laying down on stage, dude. Struggling, just squirming around on this $5,000 rug that you rented for your own comedy special. It's weird, man. It's weird to fund your own comedy special. You know, because you go around and you put up posters of yourself and you're wearing the same clothes that you have on in the pictures and the posters. And it's like the height of arrogance, you know what I mean? It's just like the absolute most arrogant thing you can do. Here's a poster of myself. I'm challenging myself to a duel on Friday, April 29th at 8 p.m. Come watch me shoot myself in the head. <laughs> yeah. Comedy's a scary thing, you know? And, I mean, there's not a lot of places you can get support for being a comedian. Really. Like, these people think they're funny. They probably are. But they don't know what it's like. They don't know what it's like to perform at a casino five miles outside of Butte, Montana after an eating contest. <laughs> and you trip over a guy's breathing machine on the way out. <laughs> and you're not the headliner. You're the support act. And a lady flashes your friend under bright lights, and it's weird to be flashed, but it's also really weird to be flashed when there's only six people in the audience. <laughs> heckling, people always say, oh, I'm gonna come heckle you, I'm gonna come heckle you. You know, you're like, okay. <laughs> the bar has been set pretty high. <laughs> like, I had a girl one time, she came to a show on meth, and yelled at me. And it was the biggest show I'd ever done. And I had to deal with it, you know what I mean? Like, I broke up with her from the stage in front of 500 people. <laughs> I guess something I like to tell people at the end of shows is, and this is a very important lesson, and I, I say it at the end of every show. Maybe it's my catchphrase, I, I don't know. But if you ever find yourself in the lactation room at the Atlanta airport, don't introduce yourself to anybody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I'm really glad you're here. <laughs>